there are also some really excellent illustrations of what we've been talking about, and not just illustrations, but explanations of how all of this is fitting together in this particular book, which I'd highly recommend that you buy if you haven't already got it. It's the Enterprise Integration Patterns book by Gregor Hoppe, Hoppe and Bobby Wolf, a Martin Fowler signature series book. It's very good. If you take a look at the endpoint we've been talking about before, Here's a quick sort of explanation and an illustration of it. So you have your sender application, which doesn't know anything about the messaging system. And then the question is, well, how do you get it to understand the system? And again, what we talked about before, you put in this message endpoint, just so you can see what we had been talking about before. There's also this concept of a translator, which we mentioned before, where you have an endpoint uh, where you have sort of an application here, of course, and then you know its ultimate endpoint on the other side. And notice too, this endpoint is the same thing as a gateway and is the same thing as a client. And I think that you'll find the more that you study these things, message-oriented middleware, you have a lot of terms, a lot of terminology, a lot of vocabulary, all referring to the same thing, multiple, multiple terms. An endpoint is a gateway, a gateway is a client, the client is part of the client server system. And then you have these point-to-point uh, -point channels and in any case. Here's the translator we have been talking about. The translator is another good example of that. It's also called a bus, and we're going to look at why that is uh, later. And they're all very closely related sorts of concepts, but very often that's sort of the difficult thing is the terminology. And anyway, the message is going to travel along this and go off to its uh, final endpoint, final application via the endpoint. Then there is something here called a send and forget system. We're going to look at that uh, actually in just a second, where we talk about something called point to point and subscribe. Uh, publish. But before we do that, let's also look at routers. So again, um, you're going to have some sort of message that's going to be routed around through different uh, systems. And some of those systems can be fairly complicated, right? You can have these things called dynamic routers, which look inside the message, looks at the topic inside the message very often, and then it will, based on that, determine where the output uh, ought to go. Now, at this point, we need to talk about something called a publish, subscribe, and something called point-to-point. -point. We have already sort of discussed point-to-point, -point, so let's start there. That's what we've been drawing so far. A point-to-point -point style of messaging is built around the concept of message queues. Messages are stored on a queue by a source application and a destination application retrieves the messages. This provides the capability of storing and forwarding messages to the destination application in an asynchronous or decoupled manner. So we've already talked about coupling and decoupling. We're going to talk about asynchronous pretty soon. Synchronous request slash reply designs can also be implemented by using point-to-point -point asynchronous messaging. So essentially, it's just a point-to-point, uh, point, like it says, um, exactly what we've been talking about and what we have been drawing as well. What we haven't really talked about is this publish-subscribe model, and that's where we need to spend a second. So in a publish-subscribe system, uh, it is a system that allows the provider of information to be further decoupled from consumers of that information. In point-to-point -point messaging, connected applications need to know the name of the queues through which they interact. The queue names might not actually be the same in the sender and the receiver because the web sphere MQ administrator can define aliases and other mechanisms to route uh, to other systems. In publish, subscribe, the applications agree on the name of a topic. This is why we talked about topics before. So the producer of a message. So there's another example of terminology that sort of changes. A producer is the sort of source, and a consumer is the uh, recipient. So that's nothing more com complicated than that. Someone is sending, someone's receiving. The producer is sending, and the consumer is uh, receiving. The producer of a message is also known as a publisher, and the message is labeled with a topic. The consumers of messages which are called subscribers, because you can subscribe to these topics, like you could sort of subscribe to a magazine in the real world, tell WebSphere MQ that they're interested in a topic, and each is sent a copy of the relevant message. And here is an example of a topic. Remember we had talked about this. A topic is simply a text string, normally within a hierarchical structure. So it has a hierarchical structure that's as text is set like this. A forward slash price, and this is a parent, and then fruit, and then apples, right? So you have parent, child, and then grandchild. A 
subscriber might use this topic exactly or subscribe to topics with a wildcard so that there is no need to know all of the topics that might be used by the publisher. So, you know, if, if you have some consumer that's trying to find everything about fruits or, you know, is interested in anything about fruits, it just says, hey, I want fruits and this could be a wildcard here. I don't really, anything, it's apples or it's bananas or it's fruit of some kind, it's, it's, so long as it gets to me, it's all it cares about. There can be a single subscriber, many or none, to any particular topic. The publisher does not need to know how many subscribers exist. So the knowing those things, you will be able to understand essentially what is called the bus. And we have sort of already talk about, talked about the bus. Um, in the case of ICFM, you have something called, and, and notice how here, right, a message broker. And ICFM, the bus is the... IBM integration bus, and you're thinking, well, okay, what's a bus exactly? Well, a enterprise service bus, of which IIB, IBM integration bus, is part. An enterprise service bus runs at the center of this wide range of connections and of applications and protocols, it performs tasks such as routing and data transformation so that any endpoint can communicate with any other endpoint. Traffic passes through an ESB without requiring a complex and unmaintainable mesh of individual point-to-point -point connections. WebSphere Message Broker is an ESB product. Uh, Message Broker is actually the old name, and it is now, again, it's called IIB, just so you know. And if you see any uh, documentation that talks about Message Broker, remember it's now IIB. It is an ESB product that connects these endpoints in meaningful ways to simplify application and device integration. It requires that WebSphere MQ is also installed on systems where it runs. This is partly because WebSphere MQ enabled applications are an important class of connectivity that it must support, but also because it uses queue manager provided services such as transaction coordination, publish, subscribe, and the reliable storage of messages. One of the WebSphere Message Broker administration tools, the WebSphere Message Broker Explorer, runs inside WebSphere MQ Explorer to provide a single point of control for both products.